Hello, and welcome to the House of Delegates, New Delegates, and Alternative Delegates training for use at the Michigan Pharmacists Association's annual House of Delegates session. Before we get underway, we would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your commitment to your component organization in serving as a delegate, whether that organization is a regional society, a local association, a student organization, or on behalf of the MPA Executive Board itself. The House session begins the annual operational cycle for MPA and is the event where delegates identify policies and issues to be considered by the Executive Board in the coming year by introducing them in the form of resolutions. They may also consider any bylaws changes and the delegates also conclude the annual cycle for House business from the previous year by voting on actions pertaining to the reports from the various commissions and committees of the Michigan Pharmacists Association. The House session is the opportunity for delegates to provide input on issues, policies, or programs that will be considered by MPA committees, task forces, practice sections, or the executive board. This is the opportunity each year where MPA members get to speak and ensure that their voices are heard. Delegates at the House session shall adopt, reject, or refer reports on issues, policies, and programs which were adopted for consideration at previous House sessions. On even-numbered years, delegates also elect the House officers, namely the Speaker and the Vice Speaker of the House. Delegates also act on reports from the MPA Executive Board. It is the, the authority of the House of Delegates to adopt policies and programs and to recommend planning to the executive board. It is then the responsibility of the board to implement and administer the positions of the House of Delegates to the best of its ability within the scope of the association's organizational resources. Here we'll have a brief overview of the discussion topics for this presentation. The MPA bylaws as they pertain to the House of Delegates, the purpose of the House of Delegates, the role of the various House officials, including Speaker, Vice Speaker, Secretary, and Parliamentarian, the composition of the House of Delegates, the duties of the House, the resolution process, followed by rules of order, Parliamentary Procedure Reference, and House Rules. The area of the MPA bylaws covering the House of Delegates is Article 5, General Operational Provisions. There are Sections 1 through 4, and we will review each of these in turn. Section 1, Meetings. The House of Delegates shall meet at least annually. The House of Delegates may be convened for such interim or special meetings as necessary to conduct the business of the House of Delegates. In addition to the House session, the House later in the year also votes to approve the slate of candidates for the ballot used in MPA annual elections. Such business may be conducted through voting either in an electronic or a U.S. mail format. Section 2, Quorum and Voting. Each delegate shall be entitled to one vote. A delegate shall not act as a proxy of another delegate, nor as a delegate for more than one organization. A member of the association may attend any session of the House of Delegates and shall have the privilege of the floor, but shall not be allowed to vote if not serving as a delegate. Even if you don't have the opportunity to serve as a delegate, it's encouraged that all MPA members at some point attend a House session to get a true appreciation of the House and its processes. 51% of the authorized delegates of the House of Delegates shall constitute a quorum. Section 3, Order of Business. The rules of order for the conduct of the House of Delegates business at an official meeting shall be Robert's Rules of Order as revised, or the rules of procedures as may have been adopted by the House of Delegates. The order of business for official meetings and sessions 
shall be established by the Speaker. Section 4. Motions. Motions receiving the affirmative vote of the majority of the delegates present and voting shall be considered adopted by the House of Delegates. Here, I'll make a brief distinction. Present and voting. This means you must be physically present when a vote is taken. Looking back at Section 2, quote, a delegate shall not act as a proxy of another delegate, end quote. So if you, as a delegate, need to leave the room, be it for a bathroom break or a cell phone call, whatever the reason, you will not be able to cast your vote for the motion currently on the House floor. Moreover, you will not be able to indicate your vote beforehand or place that responsibility in the hands of another individual. There are plenty of opportunities, however, to address such unexpected occurrences throughout a House session, but the overall expectation is that a delegate will be present for the entirety of the House session. The purpose of the House of Delegates. It is the responsibility of the House of Delegates to interpret the objective of the association as stated in the bylaws, serve as the policy forming body of the association, act on all policy reports, and adopt resolutions of policy directed to the executive board, act on proposals for amendment of the bylaws, and adopt rules of procedures for governing the administration of the House of Delegates. Now, we'll discuss the role of the various House officials. First, the House officers, the Speaker of the House. Basically, the Speaker serves as the master of ceremonies for the House. They set the tone and the pace for House proceedings, and they are responsible for determining the order of business for the House. The House officers are elected by delegates every two years. Both the Speaker and the Vice Speaker positions are also term limited to two two-year terms, so a maximum of four years served in either position. The Speaker of the House's responsibilities include presiding at all meetings of the House of Delegates, appointing a parliamentarian at meetings of the House of Delegates. The Speaker may appoint committees of the House of Delegates as being necessary. The Speaker also presents a report to the delegates at each meeting of the House of Delegates, known simply as the Report of the Speaker, and appoints members to serve on the Local Association Development Committee. The Vice Speaker of the House is also elected by the delegates every two years on even-numbered years, and as mentioned under the Speaker portion, the Vice Speaker is also term-limited to a maximum of two two-year terms. The Vice Speaker's responsibilities to preside and perform the responsibilities of the Speaker in his or her absence, and by virtue of their position, the Vice Speaker serves as Chairman of the Local Association Development Committee, or LADC. LADC is the overseeing body that maintains and monitors the active status of local associations, provides support for those locals, as well as resources and materials for the locals to use in the performance of their mandatory and optional activities. The MPA Chief Executive Officer serves as the Secretary of the House. The Secretary of the House of Delegates' responsibilities, administering the procedures for delegate certification, and this is done through working with the Registration and Credentials Committee. The Registration and Credentials Committee is the group you will typically encounter as you walk into the House session. They will check your delegate registration card and compare it with the submitted list of delegates to confirm that you are a delegate and that you are registered, which will, in turn, provide you with voting privileges for the House session. The Secretary also prepares and submits the minutes of the House of Delegates to the delegates. The Parliamentarian is appointed by the Speaker of the House. Their responsibilities to serve as an expert opinion in the rules and usages of deliberative assembly, which we commonly refer to as parliamentary procedure. The Parliamentarian uses Robert's Rules of Order as their reference for conducting business of the House session. 
Next, we have the Credentialing Committee, which is appointed by the Speaker of the House. The Credentialing Committee ensures appropriate change of delegate forms are used to, delegate, to document delegate changes if applicable. They assist in maintaining attendance records for delegates, verify voting results, and keep votes and election results confidential until announced by the chair, that is the speaker, to all delegates. The composition of the House of Delegates. The House of Delegates is the legislative division of MPA. If you've ever watched C-SPAN, think of the House of Delegates as being MPA's equivalent of the U.S. House of Representatives. The House is composed of representatives of the following organizations. Recognized component groups such as local associations and regional societies, and affiliated chapters such as MSPT, the Michigan Society of Pharmacy Technicians, and the Student MPA, as well as executive board members. Referring back to the component organizations, there is a formula used to determine the number of delegates that may serve for a component group or affiliated chapter. Each of these is entitled to three delegates for the first 50 dues paid active members and one additional delegate for each additional 50 dues paid members. It's important also to note that all delegates must be members of MPA in good standing. The duties of the delegates are to review all materials provided and acts as the policy forming body of the association, to approve the previous House session minutes, approve presented executive board reports, adopt bylaws changes, uh, also acting on proposals for amendment of the bylaws, provide direction to the executive board, develop and act upon policies and procedures of the association, introduce and act upon resolutions of the association, participate in House of Delegates activities for an operational year, provide delegate report to the component organization members or affiliated chapter members, and to approve the slate of candidates running for open MPA executive board positions in the fall, as mentioned previously. The resolution process. Resolutions may be submitted by any member or delegate of the Michigan Pharmacists Association. Resolutions include a title, the name of the member introducing the resolution and the name of the organization they represent, if applicable, the body of the resolution, which provides supporting information or documentation, the whereas portion, which provides comments that support the resolved portion of the resolution, and finally, the be it resolved portion. This is the action statement of the resolution, indicating exactly what it is that the author of the resolution would like MPA to do. Some important points to consider. Resolutions for consideration at the House session must be filed with the Secretary of the House of Delegates no later than January 15th in accordance with House Rule 1. Resolutions not submitted within this time frame require the House of Delegates to suspend House Rule 1 by a two-thirds vote before the resolution can be considered. Again, that two-thirds majority vote pertains to the number of delegates present. Resolutions not submitted by the January 15th deadline may also be submitted to the House session and simply received by the House for the record. They would be received without discussion or debate and then administered according to the actions of the executive board. The executive board is not obligated to make any comment or take any action on resolutions that are submitted in this fashion. Discussion and voting would only be allowed if the aforementioned two-third majority to suspend the House rules is achieved. So, if you want your resolution to be given its full consideration, it's important to remember the January 15th deadline. A delegate must be recognized by the speaker before addressing the House or presenting a resolution. 
There is an expectation that everyone present at a house session shall conduct themselves in a professional manner. It is also important to remember that a delegate recognized by the speaker directs all comments to the speaker as part of the official record. Comments from any other delegates must be relevant to the matter at hand on the House floor. Matters not pertaining to the House business being discussed are saved for another time. An example of this would be a local association extending an open invitation to a social event. Such a comment would typically be saved for the end of the House session in an area referred to as comments for the good and welfare. Once recognized, the author of the resolution identifies themselves and the organization they represent and shall present the proposed be it resolved portion of the resolution to the House. Delegates discuss and debate the be it resolved portion of the resolution. The, re the whereas portion of the resolution is there purely for informational purposes and that portion may not be amended. Discussion is closed on the previous question when no one has additional comments to make, a motion is made to close discussion, an established time limit for discussion has been reached, or a delegate calls the question. Discussion or debate is not considered in order until the motion is made and seconded and is usually restated by the speaker. This is for the purpose of confirming what is the matter at hand and what the relevant discussion shall be focused on. A few helpful hints for delegates when speaking on the House floor. First, address all remarks to the speaker, who will then determine what further commentary is appropriate or when the vote is to be taken. Second, be brief and to the point. And lastly, be sure to limit your remarks to the pending discussion. Delegates may adopt, adopt as amended in the resolved portion, or reject a resolution through a predetermined voting procedure. Some general rules about voting. Members are not required to vote. Votes may be registered by members as either yes, no, or abstaining. Some methods of conducting a vote may include a voice vote, where indication for yes would be indicated with a yay, and an indication for no, sometimes nay, or no. Also, to have a simple show of hands, um, often using color-coded signs for accounting purposes, such as green to indicate yes or to support, red for no or to oppose, and yellow to abstain. There's also the standing method where individuals voting in a particular direction would stand to indicate that vote. And finally, the ballot method. If a delegate desires to dispute the results of a vote, he or she may call out division, and the speaker will typically call for a recount using another voting method. Often, the credentials committee is called on here to assist with the official count of votes. Some key points to emphasize on voting. It's important to remember that a vote, to, or it's important to note that a delegate is not required to vote. Most established agenda items require a simple majority vote and commonly used motions requiring a two third majority vote for passage would include a suspension of the house rules or making a special order. The results of votes are determined by the number of people voting, not by the total membership or the number of people present unless specifically stated otherwise. A vote is not officially completed until the speaker announces the decision. So what happens to adopted resolutions? Once a resolution is adopted by the House, it is forwarded to the MPA Executive Board from cons for consideration. From there, the resolution is assigned by the executive board to various MPA organizational units to evaluate adopted resolutions and develop action recommendations to the MPA executive board. The MPA executive board considers each recommendation and establishes an overall recommendation of its own that is presented to the delegates at the following house session one year later.
If the MPA Executive Board recommends adoption or adoption as amended, and the House of Delegates accepts the Board's recommendation, the resolution is then enrolled and becomes the formal policy of the association. Once a resolution is enrolled, association resources are then devoted toward implementation of that policy. Parliamentary procedure is used to bring business before the House of Delegates and to process it to some decision in an orderly manner. This is accomplished through the presentation of motions. A motion is a formal proposal presented to the House of Delegates for consideration and decision. Motions may request action, express opinion, seek support on action taken by others, seek legislation, or establish a policy. Main motions are used to bring a specific substantive item of business before an assembly. The chief characteristics of a main motion are, it is debatable, it is amenable, it requires a majority vote to pass, and it can be considered, reconsidered that is, or rescinded. A motion passes with a majority vote. Here, you will see a resource that summarizes the various actions that may be undertaken within parliamentary procedure. You'll see the action listed, whether it requires a second, whether it's debatable or amenable, and the type of vote needed for resolution of the matter. There are five House rules that govern House business. Rule 1 operational procedures. This area covers the process of the resolutions themselves, how a resolution is introduced, and the types of votes taken for action on the resolutions. Rule 2, component organization system for local associations. Here you will find the breakdown formula for dues allocation, which provides the funding for a local association. Rule 2 also covers the criteria and reporting necessary for local associations to maintain their active status in the form of mandatory and optional activities. Rule 3, nomination and election of House officers. The Speaker and the Vice Speaker are elected to two-year terms on even-numbered years and are term-limited to two terms for each position. Rule 4, approval of the nominations committee report, and rule five, the process for adoption of, revision to, and suspension of the house rules. And with that, we reach the end of the new delegate and alternate delegate training. Once again, we would like to thank you for your interest in the house of delegates and for your service as a delegate for your component organization. If you have additional questions regarding the house of delegates process, please contact the Speaker or Vice Speaker of the MPA House of Delegates or any member of the MPA staff. We look forward to seeing you at the House of Delegates.